Here we go again, boys and girls. Bobby Blitz from Overkill. That's right, coming at you. This is Horns Up. It means you're in the right place. We're in Hell's Kitchen, New York City, right outside Stage 48, of course, with Bobby from Overkill. Welcome back home, man, because you've been on the road with Creator. It's the last show of the tour. So how do you feel to be back home, man, after uh, you were telling me that it was been, it's been a pretty amazing run? Good to see you, first and foremost. Good to be close to home. Good to see you guys. Uh, yeah, 20, 28 days, I think. So uh, usually we're somewhere around three weeks that we tour, but this has uh, been a little bit longer for us. Um, the thing that I, I'm kind of sorry to see it go because uh, uh, we really get along with these guys and Creator. Uh, we think the package is great at this level. Um, the places have been full. I mean, two nights in New York is fantastic. Uh, we decided to do here instead of the Best Buy because it would uh, accommodate more people over a two-night period. Um, so this was the idea behind it. So I'm, I'm thinking now, as this is the last day, sorry to see it go, but it's still a great success up to this point. And do you get to go home after the show tonight? Absolutely, man. <laughs> <laughs> and what is the first thing you're gonna do when you get home? I'm gonna pet the dog. <laughs> Which breed of dog? I've already kissed. The, I've already kissed the wife. She's on the bus. <laughs> what kind of dog do you have? Uh, I have German Shepherd. I've I've always had uh, purebred Shepherds since I was, um, I, I guess, an adult and had my own place to keep them, like uh, you know, property and house. Uh, so this is my third, and uh, she is now six, ninety pounds understands two languages uh and she was uh, what's called soft hand trained so she's never been spoken to with any kind of anger or aggression so she can actually when when there is anger or, or aggression her her instincts get her to defend against it as opposed to making her defend against it it's a really unique way of training a dog so it's so she's sweet as pie but the you know the other side of it is is that she's still a german shepherd and has that instinct so it's it's really cool yeah really cool <laughs> that's pretty cool see i didn't know that and, yeah, so you know the training you, you actually speak to the dog you hold their ha their hand and you tell them what they've done wrong but you do it in a very calming kind of a voice and the shepherds are smart enough to understand the um that type of uh process for training a little sidebar, an interest of mine. <laughs> and how would you say that correlates to running a band successfully for such a long time? Oh, I was never soft hand trained. I was beat. I was beaten into this. <laughs> the, you know, I think that you know, running a band for as long as we have is, uh, you know, I think you're in for life, or you, or you think that you're in for life when you first start. And in our case, it was uh, obviously the truth. You know, this is something that's more than a career. It's it's uh, quite obviously a life. Didi and I have known each other since 1981. Uh, and successfully have managed to uh, write many songs or partake in many songs, uh, just he and I or with other writers. Uh, so I, I, you know, I, I think that the idea is cooperation, uh, trust, and then putting the, I think you put the other guys while being ahead of saying, hey, man, it's, it's a band, it's metal, and you got to do it. You say, hey, man, you know, is everything cool? Then, then everything after that kind of works out. I think that that's the easiest way. So maybe it is kind of soft hand. <laughs> I mean, it's a family, man. You gotta make sure everybody's well fed. You know, not only you, you know, you think to be able to have a band successful for a long time, you can't put yourself first all the time. But you also gotta know, you know, the balance. In other words, yeah. there's, there's, you can't spell team without M E. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think you're right, and 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 it's, uh, you know, if we have a good lineup out here, and and Dave's been in the band now for over a 13 year period. He's the longest standing guitar player ever in Overkill. Uh, Derek's been around for 10 years. Ron is uh, now on his seventh year, um, eighth year. Uh, the I think the idea is that there's a good lineup. Uh, it's good guys who want to get out and do, you know, heavy stuff, you know, heavy music. And I think that if you have that chemistry on the front end, uh, that when you get on uh, on the stage to do that touring or in the studio to do that writing, uh, that things just kind of work out because there's not a lot of bullshit that surrounds the, you know, there's not a lot of who's first, who's second, who's more important. It's really about overkill and us getting together and, and doing it by having a good time doing it. And obviously, big news right now is that you're working on a new album. 
Everybody's extremely excited because when you release the Electric Age, I mean, for us, it was the record of the year. A lot of metal fans were like, oh, my God, that band still has it. Obviously, you're writing music right now. Why don't you tell us about the different aspects this time around, what you're writing around, what you guys are doing differently musically? Because obviously, Overkill has always been about evolving, but at the same time, you know, maintaining true to their style. Yeah, I, you know, for a bunch of it is right in the table behind you over there. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm finishing it on the road, so it's... Um you know, the way it's always hard for me to get a, a, a feel for the record while I'm writing it because it becomes, it really becomes kind of a collection of chaos. And, and you're trying to unravel that chaos and figure out what you're going to do and where you're going to make your, your mark or your imprint on it. Uh, what I'm getting out of it is that it's it's a riff oriented record. Um, it leans more in a heavy metal direction, in my opinion, uh, than the last record did. Uh, but not without its uh, blasts and explosions and nuances. I think there's just more dimension to this record than the Electric Age. That would be more of the the initial, my initial take on it. You know, it's not uh, not an overkill record. It's an overkill record. You know, <laughs> and we work in a box. You know what I'm saying? We just try to expand that box every every time. But I think the riffs that Didi came up with on this record have more of a metal vibe. Uh, it's more of a guitar-laden record um, than than what we did with the uh, Electric Age. So let's see what happens. I might be right. I might be wrong. We'll find out in March. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, things definitely change around, especially after you see the initial reaction of the public. And especially on the live setting, because I'm sure there are songs that you guys write for the students, some songs that work and some that don't work when you play them live. You know, that's all part of the process. But, the you know, the, the, the whole thing... You know, I've I've always been one to say, I don't want to repeat myself, uh, but there's also a very fine line between that repetition and and a style that you develop over over many years. I mean, you're going. How many times have you used the word fire in there? You know, or how many times have you used the word uh, you know power, for instance? So I think that you know, on this record, the hardest thing for me to do is to not repeat, to try to be. Uh, looking at it as if it's fresh material, to try to look at it, sure, I have experience, but try to look at it as if it's the first and the last thing that I'm ever going to write. And I think if you take that attitude into the writing, that you st stand a really good chance of succeeding, because I do have experience. I will be able to get through writing the record. That's not the point. But if I, I put myself in the mindset of it's, this could be the last one, but so I'm going to treat it like the first one, it's going to, uh, I usually get successful results. Dude, I got to tell you, I'm just dying through this whole thing with Dee Dee's belt is like on your head. <laughs> hey, it's Dee Dee's belt, It's going to look awesome. <laughs> it's cool by me. It's Dee Dee. It's like we're in the laundry room right now in the back of the bus. <laughs> You're home away from home, man. And uh, what are some of the rules that Overkills has on the bus and on tour? You know, maybe that's different from other bands. What are some of the things that people would be maybe surprised about? Oh, surprised about? I don't think there's really anything. Um... You know, you obviously respect other people's space. Uh, there's one great rule when it comes to, I think, most touring bands, and that's if you make it back to your bunk, you're safe. <laughs> but don't fall asleep in the lounge drunk. <laughs> or you're going to wake up with different color skin, or your eyebrows will be gone, or somebody will tape something to you that's ridiculous that you can't get off for four days. But I think that's just the fun of it. Um one of the things I like doing is um, I like having separate departments um, on the bus. I mean, I really like the merch person to do the merch. Um, I really like having uh, a woman on the bus. And it's uh, and not specifically for myself. And you're like, oh, really? <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> but I think that to some degree, you know, when we're out here, uh, that it, it just kind of keeps everything a little bit more... Uh, like on an even keel, and the shows become more important than just partying on the bus. <laughs> so, so we have like, for instance, um, uh, a girl who does our merch uh, in Europe. We have uh, uh, two girls, so one who tour manages us, one who does our merch, and that always seems to keep us kind of on a little bit more in the straight and narrow and focused on the shows. So it's and it, it smells way better when there's a couple <laughs> girls on the bus. <laughs> Absolutely, and uh, what do you bring on tour for? I mean, you, you were just saying that you're writing some of the parts here while you're on tour. What is some, what is some of the equipment that you bring with you? Well, I bring a Tascam 8-track. It's kind of an old-school thing I've been using now for, I guess, probably eight years or so. I mean, it's MIDI, so I can go in and out of my computer, and I can hook my computer up directly to it. Um, I like I like to do that. I bring a couple of microphones with me. I bring a Shure 58, which I use uh, in the... 
live performance. And, and one of the reasons is that it's you could build a house with these things. I mean, these fucking things, you could pound nails with them and they still sound like they did before you were hitting the nails with them. You know, I mean, they're, they're just a great, durable microphone. Uh, but I use that here. I use different things when I'm in the studio at home or, or at Didi's studio. Uh, what else do I bring? I bring books. I bring... Uh, I bring sweater because <laughs> it's going to be cold <laughs> like today in New York. Uh, what else do I bring? Computer, stuff like that. Sim- simplicity. Try to travel light. Less is more. And uh, I see that you're turning to the e-cigarette. I mean, uh, why was that change? How did, how did that come about? Because I know for some people it's a little weird of a transition, but has it worked for you? I've been uh, – I, I picked one up on October 23rd of uh, a year ago. So this is my 14th month of – not smoking tobacco, so it's uh, that's quite a change for me. One of the, one of the great changes is that you know we're at the end of the tour and I'm still, I can still have normal conversation. When when I used to smoke, it would take about you know it, by this time I'd be ah, I could always do the shows for some reason, but the speaking voice would just be gone by this point. So that's that's really helped. It's given me more, more wind. Um, you know, I went down a few times over the last year, and a lot of that was based on, like, lung issues, you know, with regard to, you know, bronchitis or, I mean, I got pneumonia on the Testament tour. And I wasn't smoking at the time that I got that pneumonia, but the point is, is I still got it. And since I've been using this, I have more wind, and I, you know, I'm not cheating with, with Marlboros. So, that's yeah. my... That's my take on it. I mean, I, you know, I recommend it to anybody who's trying to quit smoking, but uh, I don't recommend it to people who haven't started yet. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Good for you. And uh, obviously because we want to not only see you do more records, you know, do more tours, but so importantly, like, to see you in good health is great for the entire metal scene because you're obviously one of those guys that everybody looks up to. So it's great to see you in such great spirits. And I'm glad that you're making the changes when you felt you needed to change it so that way you can keep doing this. Because I think one of the most important things as a professional musician, especially after doing it for years, is that you got to find that balance so you can keep doing it. It's true. I mean, and life changes, you know. I mean, we'd be, we'd be fools to say we haven't gotten older and haven't changed. You know, I mean, it's just the way it is. That's life, you know. So... So as life uh, deals its uh, ups and downs, you have to make adjustments. And that's all this was when it was an adjustment. And a lot uh, less hard than I thought it was going to be. You know, I'm, and I'm not, I'm not an advocate or an anti-anything. I think people should do whatever the, they want to do. You know, you want to do it, you go do it. If that's the thing that turns you on, whatever it may be, I'm not going to tell you it's wrong for you. It's just not, it's not my place. It's not my thing. But for myself, I got to make those decisions. I have to make those adjustments, and and obviously this one has worked out pretty well. So I mean, this tour has been great. The uh, we did a European tour. We did a whole summer back and forth from Europe. Uh, we were in Scandinavia in April, and you know, not smoking was uh, was kind of new. But th- the other side of it was that I got great benefits out of it. So. And what's uh, in the agenda for the next six months to a year, apart from the record release, of course? That's the most important thing. But was, what else do you have lined up? Well, you know, of course, the record. Uh, finish it, record it, mix it. Um, we're going to Costa Rica in a couple weeks. That's going to be cool. It's our first time down there, down to San Jose. We're headlining a festival down there. Uh, then we have the 70,000 Tons Cruise, which uh, all the wives and girlfriends love. <laughs> we do two shows, and you're hanging out for four days, you know. So it's so that's always kind of that's always kind of a cool little way to separate that New York cold winter by going down to the, you know, on the boat out of Miami. I think we're going to the Bahamas this year. Our next Euro tour starts a week after the drop of the record. We start at, um, in Wales at a festival called Hammerfest, which we're headlining. And we're going to come through the UK and then drop down into Europe for uh, March and April. And I mean, I lo- like I said earlier on, I mean, I love talking to the creator guys. I mean, and because and, uh, we're, we're cut from the same cloth and they would love to continue touring too. So we're going to see what their plans are. I mean, maybe do something in Europe with them because they're, uh, you know, just a pleasure to be around. You know, it's one of those things that, you know, they want to go up there and kill and we want to go up there and kill. And you want to beat the other one. I mean, it's not like you don't want to, you don't go up to lose. I mean, we're going up for competitive values here and competitive uh, reasons. But uh, but I think that when the, when the playing field's level um, and both bands have an even chance at something like this, you know, we're both playing the same amount of time. You both have the same amount of lights. 
uh, you both have the same uh, production value when it comes to it, that it becomes really great competition because it's it's level, and that's that's really fun. You know, it's like two boxers going at it. <laughs> hey, man, with that said, creator are about to go on here at Stage 48. Bobby, I want to thank you very much, right, my Joe, brother. It's a pleasure, Joe. Have a great show today. Right, Say travels. Happy holidays, man. I don't care what you celebrate. It's all about, you know, being with the family. So. Celebrate this. Horns up, motherfucker. <laughs>